Welcome everyone to today's video. A final update to this touchpad situation here. The other day I patched here the Linux kernel for this ID and I thought it worked. However, I today accidentally rebooted because somehow also what I did not yet mention is that this apparently here is not the most stable connection. Sometimes it loses the USB drive because I use here this portable SSD for my portable Linux stuff as seen in all my other videos. Because I had my iPhone there, then I thought maybe electromagnetic interference and no idea then because then it worked a day or two and then again I lost my root volume here. So not yet sure. This is also to those people who say USB-C is awesome. Of course it's quite good. But what I always said with this Max here versus Thunderbolt connector, this mini display port, I have a MacBook Air where it was not much used and this mini display port connector has extremely bad connection up to the point that plugging in a display is a process of wiggling and pressing there this mini display port cable until you have a connection with this link training to have a high enough signal integrity there. So I'm a little bit suspicious. I'm not really sure if this mini two connectors as a best long-term solution looks a little bit fragile to me. What I actually wanted to make a video about is sending in patches because we want to be here educational and for this it is best to use some text-based kind of email client and I say this because if you just send in a patch it will probably reject it with white space damage. Normally I use ximax, however the mail client I used even two decades ago or so, mu, does not have ximax support anymore so we need to use the regular imax and I set up here my old-fashioned mu mail environment. Do we even have Wi-Fi maybe not? Had to switch with, so G is switched to another inbox, but this video is not about teaching you how to use mu specifically. I did not use this for a decade. So I used this for a decade, but that was a decade ago. So even for me, the relearning curve was a little bit steep. With G, you switch the inbox here, so inbox T2, for example, and then unfortunately you need to range up to this here, otherwise it only updates the inbox, a little bit inconvenient. The reason I say this is because this is what I use to send patches in, just for the reason that other mail clients, if I would use Apple Mail, but even Thunderbird or something, the patches are usually white space damaged, because usually you want to send this inline as text. Most people don't like attachments. I personally also prefer inline for readability on smartphones and such. Attachments are always a little bit inconvenient, also don't compress it. If you compress it and tower it and whatsoever, it makes everything even more inconvenient. You want to send this to something like Linux kernel or some similar mailing list and then usually inline the patch. And this was, I think, xi, insert file, user source t2 trunk, package space, Linux, I square C RMI Dell patch, so without the 2 corporate boilerplate, and something like this. Need to check the exact signed off syntax here. This is actually the video I wanted to make today to show you what alternative mail solution exists and how you would send something in, because many crappy UI email clients, user agents like Outlook. Apple Mail and even unfortunately Mozilla Thunderbird and I really wonder why they do this of all of this mail programs. Thunderbird should be the one who does not white space damage but I send things embarrassingly to the Linux kernel mailing list even so David S. Miller for Spark stuff or Network and something and then it was rejected with white space damage. White space damage meaning, convert, meaning your email program converting these tabs here to spaces behind your back or even verse breaking lines here somewhere like here and of course this kind of patches no longer apply and are damaged and I personally when I get a patch for something as I'm not that famous and don't get too many patches I usually manually correct this white space damage or even just if this is a one line you can just copy and paste this line to your source code project but the Linux kernel people will usually not do this and just respond hey hello this is white space damage try again this is what I wanted to say today. Unfortunately, I noticed rebooting 
due to this lost USB connection here that it would no longer work. And this made me realize that this patch I made here actually did not work. And I wasted another hour of trial and error. And this is also the point of these videos, not to make here a $3 profit with a one-liner patch, but actually fix things and also educate things. And only due to this rebooting, and this is, by the way, always a good idea to reboot, I noticed this doesn't work. It again was stuck in this mode where I had basic mouse and I investigated more. And it turned out, apparently, I don't need this RMI module here, so no idea of what this is for. This apparently also doesn't have a major effect for me, I guess, or I don't know, something. My latest finding is that it is a normal multi-touch. I even said in the other video multi-touch, multi-multi-touch. But there you also see how complex this is. Multi-touch. Even I do something and I think it works, and when I wanted to send it to the mailing list, I realize only accidentally it didn't even work. And again, this is all to show you that everyone can do this. I think for most of the stuff you do not need a computer science degree. Obviously it helps. But even when I do something there, you see also testing, testing and more testing. I thought this works and this was not what was needed. And yeah, just like with our own commercial software, testing, more testing. When we do some to debug code and it works for us, does not mean that it also works for our customers and they come back with documents scanned where it's not recognized. And yeah, testing, testing, more testing, and I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come. And we need to take a look now. The thing is, this 4K display is such a high resolution that my 200% scaling is probably not enough, even for me. So for the videos, also, it is readable in person. It's, of course, super small on camera. So, I saw for the Microsoft Surface, type cover is using multi-touch for the small touchpad there. So, I would now next look into the driver input HID multi-touch or something. It might be a workaround to just load the HID multi-touch first in your initRD or system startup scripts, but of course it's best not to rely on such workarounds. It's always best to have this stuff really fixed upstream for everyone else and all the other distributions to enjoy. So wherever the multi-touch is. Oh, there was HID here, here. And these modules often have a blacklist and such. They usually have here some device match and something tables. And was here by the way something for the surface, at least at some point. Surface Pro 2, here is wherever they use this here in H ID quirks. Maybe this is where we need to add it then to force multi touch. Please note that for multi touch devices. Driven by HID multi touch driver, there is a proper auto detection auto loading in place based on presence of HID DG contact. Those devices do not need to are here. Maybe HID have special drivers, so maybe we would add it here. Many Apple, ASUS, Cherry surface is here. Is this in this list? No, this is a quirk. This is surface something. No image reports. So here I would need to see if just adding it with multi-input. I also would need to upload what exactly this is doing. If this is forcing multi-touch or not. But you see how many IDs in here it also really sets that we need a such a long database table of quirks and overrides. Audio detection for USB, HID sensor hubs exist too. If a collection of type physical is found inside the usage page of a type sensor, HID sensor hub will be used as a driver. Mm. So I guess I add it in here and see if this fixes a thing. You say if you only if enabled, 
but only if this other driver is really enabled and compiled in with the module. I usually put them at the end, but it depends on the maintainer where they wanted them. I really hate them old-fashioned. Copy and paste doesn't work. Okay, then we type it. 